right, step one of this build is to take your sheet of foam board from the Home Depot. This is a 24 inch by 24 inch by 1 inch sheet. We're going to measure up 7 inches, or rather 7 and a quarter, 7 and a quarter. Go along, draw a line, and then we're going to cut it out using this razor blade for quite a few times. All right, step one. Set that aside for now. Bring the board over. Measuring up. Uh, seven and a quarter inch. We leave an extra quarter inch just to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room to play with. Because you don't want to cut it too closely and then be out of luck. You'll notice on a lot of these Home Depot pink forms, uh, pink foam boards, a lot of the ends of the boards are curved. Pretty much, you can use this as scrap or for other pieces of the project, but you can't use it as your wing section because it's curved. So you gotta take a look at your blocks before you even begin cutting. So now we've got our two wing sections or future wings. Okay, next up, we'll be attaching our seven inch Clark Y airfoils to the edge of the foam board, like so. To begin, take your airfoil section, put it up against the wing. I like using a straight edge or something so I know it's all the way forwards. Then I take a one inch wood screw, start it with my hand, and work it in a little bit with a screwdriver. And that's what you're left with. Go ahead and do the other side. Make sure your airfoil is pointing forward still. And there's your second half. So we have there, there. Time to cut it out. All right, the next step is to cut the foam airfoil using the hot fire cutter. I like to start somewhere a little bit behind, bring it down, and then just pull it forward nice and slow, and try and keep a consistent pressure. Try and keep a consistent pressure and just watch as the wire is getting closer to your tip. Okay? So I've rounded the tip. Pushing it forwards. You can always sand out the little imperfections, so there's really not a huge uh, deal. There we are. There's half the airfoil shape cut out. Now we need to come along and do the second half, the trailing edge. Line it up. I like to leave a little bit of a ridge. because I like sanding down that little ridge. I find that gives me cleaner cuts. And we're through. I'm just going to trim the edge and see if I can get it to be flush. Okay. And there we have our wing section. I know it's the camera's kind of zoomed in, but uh, that'll work. Next up, let's go grab the other wing half. All right, keep in mind to keep your wire clean. If you're using a foam wire cutter, the foam can get gunked up on there. I like using a piece of paper. And we'll go ahead and begin the second cut, lining up our wing. Starting from around the same place, sinking down and moving forward. Our time, trying to round both edges at the same point. Cut, and we have rounded the edge, transitioning our pressure to downwards pressure instead of upwards. 
slowly pushing it forward. And there we are. The ridge was much smaller on this portion of wing. Now, take care in how you're holding the wing, because that will affect the shape, actually. If you're putting pressure in the center of the wing, it can cause the wing to have a bow shape to it. Keeping a careful eye on both edges of the wing, we'd like the wire to exit at about the same time. removed and that's what we're left with come along and trim up the edge there we are and clean off the wire and we're gonna go ahead and remove the airfoil template Alright, now we have two wings that just need to be sanded and trimmed up. During this process of the build, I like to wear a uh, painter's mask or just one of those breathing masks so you don't accidentally inhale any of these dust particles. I also wear a few pair of earmuffs because I can't stand the sound of sanding. Well, you get the gist of it. Next up, we'll be adding a carbon arrow spar to make this wing stronger. I use a homemade spar drill bit that consists of a arrow spar that has some notches cut on the end of it. I line it up, and uh, this this takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. You, some folk like using a jig to hold everything level, but for this kind of application, I find I can freehand it just well. And then from time to time, you got to empty the foam out of the center of the drill bit using a metal rod. That's all for this video. In future videos, I'll be showing how to coat the wing, cut out your control surfaces and mount your control horns, as well as make your own push rods. Thanks for watching, and if you like this channel, feel free to subscribe. Have a good one.